So our first president uh, presentation president presentation today is going to be by Madeline Padalino. And she's a double major in anthropology and international studies. Um, hence, the topic fits perfectly. It goes well with archaeology and international studies, <laughs> being in an area that's quite politically interesting. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Madeline and take it away. Thank you. Now I've got to figure out how this works. Yeah, well, let's go with that. Hello. Uh, like she said, I'm Madeline Pedalino, and I will be discussing uh, the archaeology of Masada and the controversy around the actual excavation of it. I'll give you a brief overdue, oh, overdue. <laughs> overview of what we'll be talking about today. Uh, I'll go over the introduction of the Northern and Western Palace. Yes, there's two. Uh, other buildings, the Roman siege, and the Masada today in Israel. Uh, ooh. <laughs> Uh, like she said, Masada is located in eastern Israel in the Judean desert. It is overlooking the Dead Sea. The plateau is uh, approximately 1,800 feet high, or 550 meters, by 900 feet high, or 275 meters. It has a rough rhomboid, rhomboid shape. <laughs> the western cliffs are about 1,300 feet high, and the eastern cliffs are about 300 feet high. This is the layout of the uh, site of Masada. As you can see, most of the buildings are located on the oh, this <laughs> on the northern end. Um, the northern end is actually import, important because it is slightly higher than the southern end of the plateau and is thus easier to defend. Uh, I forgot the picture. <laughs> the oh. As you can see in this picture, there is only one path up and down from Asada in antiquity, and it is the snake path, which is right here. This is why it was used, why it's... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I tend to move. <laughs> this is why it was an important uh, stronghold, because you can't really get an army up there very quickly. Kind of hard. The first excavation was done in October of 1963 to May 1964. And the excavation was continued in no November 1964 to April of 1965. It was headed by the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and led by Yigal Yudin. There were actually many problems with the logistics of the excavation. As you can see, it is, oh, there's not a picture there. But <laughs> as you can see, it is in the middle of the desert, which has problems with water. Uh, the base camp was actually 1,200 feet below the summit because staying on the summit would have damaged the site and destroyed it. So they actually, uh, they actually stayed below the site, and there's actually a lovely picture of it later, hopefully. Um, the biggest problem was water and electricity, so they actually had to um, build a water pipe coming to the site, and they installed generators at the base camp. Masada was first fortified by King Herod, uh, and he built all the major structures at the site. After King Herod's death, it became a Roman garrison. And then in the first century CE, Palestine was under the occupation of the Romans, who had overthrew the Jewish Maccabean kingdom in the previous century. In 66 AD, there was a full-scale revolt by uh, the Jewish zealots. And in 70 AD, Roman, the Roman general Titus conquered Jerusalem and expelled the Jews. Uh, then in 72 AD, uh, the Jewish rebels took back Masada from the Roman garrison, and the 10th legion was marched against the Jewish rebels to reclaim Masada. Masada, after this, was a return to Roman garrison for 40 years, and during the 5th and 6th centuries, Masada was uh, inhabited by Byzantine monks. As you can see, there's evidence of a Byzantine church at the site. Like I said, King Herod was first to fortify the site, and it was fortified between 36 and 30 BCE. King Herod used Masada as a refuge in case of revolt or war. The first palace is the Northern Palace. It is three levels or terraces. It is the largest structure at Masada, and the upper terrace and is an extension of the narrow section at the summit. It is the highest geographic point at Masada. The middle terrace is 60 feet below the upper terrace, and the bottom or lower terrace is 40 feet below the middle. The, uh, the location of the Northern Palace is actually very important because it is the only place at Masada that gets any shade, which in the desert is very important. Uh, the rock walls on the side of the site actually served as windbreaks against the desert wind. This palace was largely, largely ceremonial and lacked any kind of service rooms or kitchens. 
This is a picture of what they believe the site to actually look like in antiquity with the upper, middle, and lower terrace. And this is a side view of it where you can see the actual stairwells coming down. The uh, lower terrace was meant for leisure only. It had Roman-style private baths, including a cold water pool, the temperate room, and the hot room, or the caldarium. It, is the be it has the best and most well-preserved art and paintings at the site. The walls were actually given, painted to give the appearance of paneled stone or marble, and had lines pan paneled into the, the stone to look like veins in the marble. And the preservation of, these, of this art was key at this level. This is a picture of what, I'm, uh, what I mean when I say the, uh, that it was painted to look like marble. This is actually the... Uh, this is the side of the lower terrace, and this is a picture of how they preserved it. They, the panels were actually coming off the walls after it was uh, excavated from the ash and sand that was on top of it that actually preserved the site. So what they did was they actually took the panels off the walls, glued them onto a special backing, and then placed them behind glass. And this is actually a picture of them removing a panel. The middle terrace. Uh, was a circular stone structure and consisted of two round walls with space in between them. The outer wall is 15.3 meter, meters in diameter and the inner wall is 10 meters in diameter. And it was, this is actually believed to be the foundation of another structure. The staircase was uncovered at this level and half was cut into the rock wall and the other half had to be built. This is a uh, mosaic that was found in this stairwell. As you can see, it's excellently preserved because of the ash and the sand that was on top of it, and because the desert is extremely dry, and thus is great for preservation. The upper terrace is the only part of the northern palace with living quarters. It has four original sleeping quarters, and is not meant to hold a large amount of people. It was either meant for Herod alone or one of his nine wives, because yes, he needed nine. It was built in two parts. The northern section was a large semicircular porch with double walls like the middle terrace, and the south section had living quarters and storerooms. It was more neatly decorated and, and also had the important location of being higher than the rest of the site. As you can see here, this is a layout of the upper terrace. This is the circular structure that is, that is uh, like the middle terrace, and then these are the actual the, the storerooms and the living quarters. The upper terrace had mosaic flooring as well as columns. The columns were built in a very interesting way. Instead of taking large stone, block, stone slabs of, column, of marble, they actually made them out of many stone blocks that were plastered and then grooved together to look like one monolithic column. The columns were marked with Hebrew numbers to indicate the order that they were to be stacked. They had Corinthian-style toppers and that were also painted. One even still had gold paint on it at the time of excavation. And this is an example of the uh, the stone blocks that were that were stacked together. As you can see, there's numbers on them to indicate which order they were in. The Western Palace, yes, there's two, was made up of three living quarters. The southeast wing held the living quarters, and the large rooms and service small service rooms built around a central court. The north, northwest wing was solely a service wing, and it also had a series of rooms that are around a central court, like the southeast wing. The west wing originally held the administration rooms, and this is the layout of the actual western palace. The western palace contained the kitchens, storerooms, and living quarters. The kitchens were, f were found to have cooking pots and stoves, and this had a colored floor from the Herodian period. This. Um, that is not felled elsewhere at the site. There is also a private bath that also contained a mosaic flooring and contained storerooms with the longest of 210 feet. Jars were held with the found that had inscri inscription of the contents, things like figs, flour, and oil. This is another example of the mosaic flooring in the Western Palace. You might be asking yourself, how did they get water in this giant desert on a large plateau? Well, the answer is cisterns. They had cisterns, cisterns built into the side of the, the plateau that caught, run off from the rain that's in, in the sides. 
these are two, pic this is a very blurry picture because my scanner wasn't working, but <laughs> these little holes right here are the cisterns, and this is the water runoff that would eventually fill them so that they had water. The large bathhouse was a large hall of, of about 33 to 36 feet and had six foot thick walls. Uncovered plaster had the impressions of clay piping and the pipes were used to carry heat into the walls and that's how Roman baths were. Beneath the floor was, floor was another floor with about 200 well-preserved small columns or hypocausts, which is this, these, these right here. This allowed hot air to flow between the floor to heat the floor and the walls. The adjacent building had an oven, which was used to heat the air, and then, then was pushed through the piping. This heated the floor and the water, when the water became, when the water was poured on it. Because in the desert, you need to be hotter. <laughs> this is a better picture of the hypocaust in the caldarium. The bathhouse was similar in design to others built in the Herodian period. The upper floor had a geometric design made up of black and white tiles. The adjoining rooms were the cold room, the tepid room, and the entrance or the disrobing room. The tepid room had decorated walls with a similar black and white tile style as the caldarium. The capitals or toppers of the pillars of the um, columns were of Nebatine style and not Corinthian. The bathhouse is evidence that Masada wasn't just a fortress but was also a royal citadel. And this is evidence to the amount of water they needed to actually use the bathhouse, because it needed a constant supply of water, which was given by slaves. This is a picture of the bath in the tempid room. Uh, as you can see, it's more of the art from the northern palace, where it's designed to look like marble paneling. 